Our next speaker is going to help us to understand the impact of cancer research in, I think, what you'll find is a very, a very meaningful way. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Don Conant because I suspect he probably won't tell you many of these things himself. Um, this is a gentleman who I hope isn't going to get mad at me for telling you that he's 49 years old. He's a businessman, he's a father of four, his family is very important to him and I know he has a loving and supportive family who are here today, several of them. Um, this is somebody who ha has always led a very healthy, healthy and active lifestyle and so at his tender age of 49 was uh, very surprised to hear that he was going to be a patient here at Vancouver General Hospital receiving care for prostate cancer under the care of Dr. Glebe and, and the team here at the Prostate Center. Um, but what I can tell you is that Don's a great example of someone who did not let this diagnose or, diagnosis or his circumstances limit him in any way. So here's what he did. Six weeks after he had his surgery, he did the sun run. Uh, um, Twelve weeks after his surgery, he did a half Ironman. And in the weeks that followed, he did an Olympic distance triathlon. He ran a marathon. And because he was, he didn't, he really didn't feel like he'd done enough, he uh, completed the Grand Fondo bicycle race from Vancouver to Whistler in September. Um, while he was having his radiation treatments, in uh, uh, every single day after his radiation, he did the grouse grind. So during his radiation, he did a total of 9,300 vertical feet. So um, these are all really quite remarkable accomplishments, and again, I'm fairly sure that we wouldn't have heard about them. But um, I'm really very grateful, and I think everyone will be, to have Don come now and tell us a little bit about his story and help us to understand why today's announcement <coughs> is so important. Don. Thank you, Minister McDermott. Honorable Ministers, Dr. Goldenberg, members of the board of VGH and the Vancouver Prostate Center, gathered family and friends. One year ago, I was living my life as the health minister would want and expect. As a family man, father of four, I voted, I recycled, and I paid my taxes. I went to the doctor, but I never overburdened the medical system, and being married to a dietitian helped me to eat well and treat my body with the type of respect that it offered me. Then, on an idle Tuesday in February, I learned that the statistic one in six men are diagnosed with prostate cancer became for me one in one. I'll not ever forget that moment. A diagnosis of cancer does not involve dialing 911, but it is being kidnapped and transported to a lonely place. For a time I was cornered in that bleak and gravityless experience, for this is a disease for which for many there is no cure. Will I live six months? Will I live six years? Death is a distant rumor to the young. My mind raced as my life's blackboard was erased and I sought to learn everything I could about prostate cancer. This was no midlife crisis. This was a life crisis. The prostate is like Bulgaria. Most men I know, they, they know roughly where it is, but don't ask me to point to it on a map. <laughs> but the treatment strikes, strikes at the heart of masculinity and shakes the very pillar of what we talk about when we talk about being a man. As I reached for help with this unexpected, unwanted, and uncertain diagnosis, I found centers of excellence here in Canada. I learned that if I was going to get prostate cancer anywhere in the world, I would want to get it right here in British Columbia because of the quality of the care, the world-class science here, and the promising research being done. 30 days from my diagnosis, just 30 days, I was home recovering from surgery to remove my cancer tumor. I read a lot about the sorry state of healthcare in this country, but my experience has been first class, from the skills of my surgeon to the staff and, uh, at, here at VGH and the Vancouver Prostate Center, to the post-operative care I've received. It's been first, first class. Through the thicket of IV tubes and post-surgical haze, I learned that my cancer had spread. I started on a drug protocol 11 months ago and I underwent more than seven weeks of daily radiation this fall. I'm coping with prostate cancer, the treatment and the catalog of emasculating and performance diminishing side effects. Mostly words when you hear them, but beyond language when you go through them. 
My family, friends, and determination bring a lot to the table to complement the cancer research that I'm today appreciating. I'm so grateful for the cards, books, love, and prayers I've received since this storm started for me. And I have much to be thankful for, including my friend Dr. Riley Sept, who just ran across Canada for prostate cancer, and my teenage son Willie, who's soon commencing an east-to-west ride across Canada to raise funds and awareness for cancer under the name Gear West. These are young men who are running and riding nationwide to help their fathers and their research efforts. My storm's not over, but it's comforting to see resources going into this center of excellence at VGH featuring Dr. Larry Goldenberg and Dr. Martin Gleave, who lead a team among the finest in the world. This center, this waiting room, has been my shelter for the past year, and more resources will, un will advance our understanding of cancer. We just don't know enough about this disease, despite the resources that we all give when cancer touches our lives. Research and excellence in cancer treatment matters not just to men, but the families to whom they belong. I speak for so many patients when I say thank you. People tell me have a positive attitude, and with today's announcement, men like me have five million more reasons to accelerate this positive attitude. Someday, Somewhere, some research team is going to discover a cure for cancer. I say, why not this research team, right here in BC, within the next 10 years? We can. We can and will meet this test. We can and will find a cure. My children and your children will live in a cancer-free world, and British Columbia will be the home to this achievement. Today's announcement raises the hopes of men across this province, and it's raised mine too. So there. Um, thank you very much, Don. Uh, you know, I, I, I've already spoken with Don about this. Um, we do have something in common. <clears throat> we both had a diagnosis of cancer and I think we would agree it's a very non-exclusive club and you don't want to be a member but if you do have to have a malignancy British Columbia is a fantastic place to be and I so appreciate the fact that you have come and put a real face and I think if any of us was to say why does this announcement matter Don's helped us to put that in a really clear perspective it's people like Don and their families who are the many reasons why this announcement is such great news today.